Welcome to HEPM 2308 Monitoring and Evaluation of Projects My students of Bachelor's of Project Management I am your tutor, Professor Henry Buisa I'm going to take you through this unit I want to draw your attention to the university course purpose and objectives of this unit. The purpose of the course of this unit is to provide the student with an understanding of the basic concepts and activities involved in monitoring and evaluation of projects. Without even going to the objectives, I want to critique that purpose. Here it is. The university purpose is biased to the cognitive domain of learning. Look, it is saying the understanding of concepts and activities. So what? I want to go beyond understanding. Because the purpose, which is talking about providing with an understanding, the word understanding, produces just you a thinker because understanding is in the head it produces you as a thinker and not a doer and look at this if you are a doer now in 10 years you'll be a millionaire but if you are a thinker now in 10 years you'll still be an employee and I don't want you to be here I want you to be a millionaire in 10 years so I want you to start doing you're doing it now. So, I am going to employ the philosophies, the well-known philosophies of renowned educationists. This one was Confucius, the great Chinese philosopher, who said, I hear and I forget, I see and I remember. I do and I understand. And then there is this Ed Cadell who did research and came out with this cone of learning or a pyramid of learning who said that when a learner just hears lectures alone, when we use just lectures, retention, the percentage of retention of knowledge is only 5%. But when we go down the cone and we do practical projects, then you retain more. And when you come back and teach others, in other words, present the project to others, then you retain even more. So, out here, the lectures, they are here and I forget, is the cognitive domain, the head, the thinking, the knowledge. You can have knowledge, a lot of knowledge, but if you do not have the right attitude, the feeling, the only then you may not become a doer because you just be a thinker, a thinker. And then if you cannot put your hands on them, on it, again, if you are not, uh, uh, I mean, this psychomotor, the skills, without a project practice, you just remain a thinker. And remember, I don't want you to remain thinkers. I want you to become doers so that in 10 years you are millionaires. So, I will give you a short lecture what I'm doing now, but I'll want you, I'll concentrate on here, you do project, you, you do, you understand, you come and present them in class, teaching others, and that way you will increase your knowledge retention. So, my assignment is already, alone or in a group of not more than three, identify a project of your own choice and carry out its evaluation based on its log frame. The evaluation may be end term or at whatever stage it is. If the project has no log frame, then construct one for it. So there you are. But we start by project. I know that if you were answering me, if I was asking what's a project and you are with me in the classroom, 
you might struggle, but some of you will tell me that your course is your project. The cheapest, the, the project that, you know, you have come into the course first year and you are ending in fourth year. So the beginning of the project, the end of the project, you go out. So what's a project? It's a complex, non-routine, one-time effort limited by time, budget, resources, and performance specification designed to meet customer needs. The major characteristics of a project, this is by way of reminding you because you have already done the basics of project management, it has an established objective. What's your objective? Your objective is to graduate and go to get, to get employed. It has a definite lifespan with a beginning and an end. Your course has a definite lifespan. You end it in year one and you must finish in year four. It typically requires across the organization participation. Yes, this is Buisa is here teaching you. Professor Mukuli is next teaching you. You know, Alan is teaching you. KK, my friend KK. So it's a cross section. Susan, they are all teaching you. Eh? Good. So, it involves doing something never been done before. You had never gone to another college before. And unless you are repeating, if, even if you are repeating a, a second degree, but this degree is not the same that way. So it is something that has not been done before. It has specific time, cost, and a performance requirement. Yes. Four years, school fees your cost, and the performance requirements. You have to pass, otherwise you'll be discontinued. Or you repeat. So, you can see that your degree suits the definition of a project. Project success. Achieving the objectives and delivering the scope while complying with project constraints. There are three project constraints. The schedule, the time, the cost, and the quality or the performance. So, you are shoveling. Which one? Are you going to go on time? Are you going to reduce cost? Are you going to increase quality? Those are now shoveling those balls. Which one is going to be heavier? Which one? So, a project has all those. Again, this is by way of reminder because you did project concepts and you did the triple constraints of a project. The time, the cost, the shape. So now monitoring. That was introducing project, reminding you. Monitoring, it is a continuous data collection and analysis process which is implemented to assess a project, a program or a policy and compare it with the expected performance. It provides regular information on how things are working. Monitoring. Evaluation. A systematic and objective measurement of the results achieved by a project, a program, or a policy in order to assess its relevance, its coherence, the efficiency of its implementation, its effectiveness, and its impact as well as sustainability. That's evaluation. Monitoring and evaluation. Monitoring assesses progress in implementation of ongoing programs. That's monitoring. Evaluation provides a snapshot against some benchmarks at a point in time of programs that may or may not be continuing. So monitoring and evaluation go hand in hand. As you monitor, you can also evaluate. So here we are. The triple constraints. Are you going to use low cost? Are you going to do it very quickly? The, the time constraints, the cost constraints, and the quality. High quality. So you are asking, at what cost were the results achieved? Monitoring and evaluation. 
And what caused it, these results? Were the results achieved in time, on time, or were they late? Because there's a schedule that you're looking at. It was planned to take this, no? Like now your course, are you going to finish it in four years, or are you going to be referred, then you take five years to finish your, your course? Quality. Are the results of the plant quality? Are the results as planned? Are they better? Are they worse? So these are the key questions we ask in relation to the triple constraints of your project. The, 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 the time, the cost, and the quality. So, cheap and high quality is low priority. Cheap and quick low quality. Fast and good can be very expensive. So you must balance. And that's why we saw this balancing. You don't be too cheap. Don't be don't compromise quality and don't be too fast or too slow. Those are the evaluation questions you are going to ask yourself. So the evaluation criteria, there are five criteria that are common. Relevance, are the project purpose and overall goal still meaningful? We are now going to look at that project. Effectiveness, whether the project purpose has been achieved and how much contribution did the outputs make? Efficiency. To what extent have the inputs been converted to outputs? Impact. What positive or negative, either direct or indirect, effects have happened? And sustainability. To what extent will the recipient country or now I mean organization be able to retain the positive effects of the project? So these are guiding questions as you use that criteria. You can pause it, you can download it, you can snap it, you can take and internalize them, fill them and own them. This is simply to reinforce what I have said on the previous slide. It is still the relevance, the efficiency, the effectiveness, the impact and sustainability. Please, again, pause your video, look at them again, compare, just asking the same questions in a different, using different adjectives. The appropriateness of the project objective to the real problems, the fact that the results were obtained at reasonable cost, how well the results contributed to the goal, the effect of the project on a wider environment, and the likelihood of a continuation in the stream of benefit. Very important criteria when it comes to evaluating projects. Again, we now want to superimpose you know the log frame. You have already done it. It's the basic, but I'll maybe I'll just uh, remind you that the log frame, you remember, it has got a vertical logic. We have the overall objectives, the purpose, the results, the activities. Sometimes we end there before the activities, but we can also go to inputs and uh, design process. So we're saying that the relevance is normally assessed at the lowest aspect of the log frame. The efficiency from the inputs through the activities. Did we use an, uh, too many materials, too many personnel in the activities to get the output? So that is the efficiency. The effectiveness 
from the results to the purpose. Results to the purpose. To what extent service and product were used to eliminate the problem. And sustainability is durability of the change, impact, contribution to the long-term change. So there you are, you can see that the evaluation criteria can be superimposed to the log frame levels. And you can look at them again. This is now your log frame. If you remember well, this is the log frame. This is the project description. We call this the vertical logic. Where we have the overall objective, the purpose, the component objectives, the results, and the activities. And you remember the horizontal logic is the indicators, objective verifiable indicators, the means of verification, and the assumptions. So I want you to go, I want you to go back to your log frame and this is our uh, template. You remember overall objective, the broader development impact to which the project contributes. The purpose, the development outcome expected. The results, the direct measurable results. And so I want you to go back to revise your log frame. If you have forgotten, please just Google. Put in your Google window the log frame approach and remind yourselves about this, um, this uh, uh, picture. So, the log frame monitoring and evaluation. Again, this is our vertical logic. The goal, the purpose, the component activity, the outputs, and the, the activities. And we are now saying the type of monitoring and evaluation. We call the goal is ex post evaluation. Ex post means after the project because we want to see whether the goal was achieved after the project has been completed. Ex post. The purpose, the evaluation, and the completion and ongoing. When the when the project just completes, then we can do what's the purpose. We can evaluate at that time. Ongoing review and monitoring and, and review. When the outputs are going on, monitoring and review. So, the level of information from the expo say the outcomes and the impact. What are the outcomes? The outcomes and effectiveness. The outcomes and how they impacted on the economy. The outcomes and how they have been effective, meeting the goal. The effectiveness and sustainability. The output and the input. Please, you go and get all this WHO Introduction to Logical Framework and they will expound for you on the same. I'm only uh, revising, reminding. Now let's go further. You remember again, this is our log frame. Overall objectives, change, project purpose, utilization, results, activities. Like I said, when, when we are evaluating the relevance, we are saying, do the results fit beneficiary priorities? Is it relevant? The quality of planning and adaptation, including the relevance of problems to correct beneficiaries, objectively verified indicators, the means, the cost assumption. You can see we are at every stage, we are putting our log frame. You remember this, the template for a log frame. So from here we go to the next level, we go to the next level, our log frame. So we are saying the efficiency comes in during the activities. That how were the inputs and the activities converted into results? Were things done in the right way? And the effectiveness, we are asking how well did the results contribute to the achievement of the project purpose? Were the right things done? 
impact which benefits on society and sector. Were there any unplanned results, positive or negative? And finally, sustainability, how and will services and benefits be maintained? So you can see, therefore, that the criteria, evaluation criteria, can be used alongside your law frame. I know you did not, may not have done this, but you did the law frame, and therefore now we are superimposing it onto the law frame. I'm saying, therefore, that if you visit it, you visited my YouTube, you will again get a number of my videos that will guide you further in terms of understanding log frame monitoring and evaluation. I wish you well.